we're going to express each quadratic relation in its vertex form by completing the square. So my first example here has a lead coefficient of 1, the a value is 1, so I don't have to worry about factoring the a value out of the first two terms. I'll just stick with what I have here and just jump right into step number two, which is actually taking half of the coefficient of the x term. So my x term has a coefficient of this minus 6. Half of that would be negative 3. And honestly, the sign doesn't really even matter on that um, because when we square that, it's going to end up being a positive value anyway. So 3 squared is 9. So to complete the square, I would need to be adding 9 on the end of that. But I can't just go adding an extra 9 in because that changes the value of the original equation. So I'm also going to subtract the 9 and then I still have the minus 4 that was in the original question. Now what we want to do is group those first three terms together because these ones end up completing that perfect square and will factor to be that perfect square. So when I factor that part, I'm going to square root the first, put it at the beginning of the bracket, square root the last, put it at the end, take the sign from the middle, and that goes to the exponent of 2. And then what we need to do is collect our like terms that we have left over right here. So minus 9 minus 4 combine to become a minus 13. So this one would have a vertex at positive 3 comma negative 13. Try the next one if you have not uh, done so already. Give it a try. Uh, put this on pause. And then you can check your work. Okay, once again, I don't have a coefficient other than 1 in front. So I don't have to worry about step 1, which is factoring. Uh, the coefficient of a out of the first two terms. So I'm going to go right into the point where I'm taking the coefficient of the x, which is 10, cut it in half, we get 5, and then 5 squared is 25. So we're going to add 25 and then subtract 25. So that will net result is 0, and then we have our plus 2 that was originally in the question. If I group those first three together, they make the perfect square, and I always want the positive to be part of that perfect square. The minus is, is the part that collects with the other constant term. And if I factor, I'm going to get an x. So square root the first, square root the last, take the sign from the middle, all to the exponent of 2. To factor that as a perfect square. And then minus 25 add 2 would be minus 23. So this has a vertex at negative 5, comma, negative 23. Now when we get to part C and part D, the A values are no longer 1. So we have that extra step 1 that we need to do. So step 1 is to common factor A only out of the first two terms. So the, the plus 3 on the end just goes along for the ride. I'm only taking the A out. I don't want the X out. I just want that A value to come out. So it's truly that vertex form of Y equals A bracket X take away H all squared plus k. Okay, so we're just factoring that a value, that constant number out. So 2 comes out of just the x squared and the x term. All right, so 2 divides into negative 8, negative 4 times, and then I build the wall. I stop at that point, and the plus 3 goes at the end for the ride. Okay, so that's step 1, factoring a out of the x squared and the x term. Step number 2 is to take half of the coefficient of the x term, so half of the negative 4 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to add a 4 and subtract a 4. So I still have the minus 4x. I'm going to add 4 and subtract 4, so my net result is 0 in there. So the line there is equal to the line above. All right, the third step is to multiply... Um, is to multiply to get rid of that minus 4 on the end. We know these first three that I've underlined in green form the perfect square. So what I need to do is take and move this minus 4 out of the bracket, and to move it out, I'm going to have to expand it by the 2, multiply by the 2. So my 2 stays here. I still have my x squared minus 4x plus 4. There's my perfect square. I stop the bracket. That will factor as a perfect square. And then I multiply the 2 with the negative 4, to move that negative 4 out of the bracket, 2 times negative 4 is the minus 8, and then we have plus 3 still on the end. All right, last step here is to factor the perfect square. Square root the first, square root the last, take the sign from the middle, all to the exponent of 2. And then we have minus 8 plus 3 
which is minus 5. And there's our vertex form in four lines. All right, part D, if you want to give that a whirl, see if you can follow the steps, put this on pause, and then you can check. All right, my first step for part D would be to common factor the negative 3, the a value, out of the x squared term and the x term. So I believe you should get, and then the minus 5 is on the end, you should get an x squared minus 4x in the bracket. You can double check that by expanding. A minus 3 times x squared is the minus 3x squared. A minus times a minus is the plus. 3 times 4 is the 12 with an x. So yes, we've done that correctly. Next. I need to take half of the x term, so half of the negative 4, the coefficient of the x term, half of the negative 4 would be 2, 2 squared would be 4, so I'm going to add a 4 and subtract a 4. So the net result of add 4, subtract 4 is 0, so it's just equivalent to the line above. The next step is I want to group these three. These three make the perfect square, so that means I need to multiply the negative 3 with the minus 4. So I still have x squared minus 4x plus 4 in the brackets. And then minus 3 times minus 4 would be plus 12 minus 5 on the end. And then we factor. We're going to have an x square root the first, square root the last, take the sign from the middle, all to the exponent of 2. And then plus 12 minus 5 is plus 7. So this one has a vertex at positive 2 comma positive 7.